Solving the 2x2 two two blindfolded is something anyone can do and only needs you to memorize something like this. Just a simple string of letters and there are memory techniques you can use for this, but we're going to first talk about how to solve this. There will be timestamps in the description and in the comments, and if you want to make sure you learn all of the concepts you have to know, then check the timestamps because those are the four most important parts. We're going to learn something that only moves two pieces at once. So we're going to be using this algorithm, which goes like this. Now you're going to have to memorize and be familiar with what this algorithm does. So if we look at where the pieces moved, we have a piece here and a piece here that have moved. So originally this piece over here had orange on the left side, and that has now moved over here to the bottom. So what this algorithm does is it swaps this one right here with this one right here. So not just these two pieces, but specifically this sticker with this sticker. So using that algorithm, I'll be able to swap this sticker, which we're going to call the buffer. We can swap this with anything on the cube. So this is the target location that it swaps with, and we're going to be able to just move any piece into the target location and swap with that piece. So for example, I want to swap this one with this one. Then all I have to do is move this into the target location just by doing that. And now I can swap this one with this one. And then afterwards, just move it back to where it used to be. And now you can see I've swapped these two. Another example, if I want to swap this one with this green one over here, all I have to do is move it over here and then move it down. That puts it in the target location, swap, and then undo those first two moves I did. And now the orange one has gone over here. So instead of just pointing at what piece I'm talking about, I'm going to start using letters for them. So for lettering, we have white top and green front, and then we're going to start at the top left and go A, B, C, D. Now to help with the visualization, I'm going to have this cube here, A, B, C, D, and then what we do as we go around is we go to the left side and keep lettering there, then the front, then the right side, then the back side, followed by facing the front again and looking at the bottom. So as you'll notice, every piece has three letters on it, and this is going to become important. So this scramble, do it with white top and green front, and you'll end up with this. And so the first thing we want to do is solve as much as we can. And uh, we're going to have this green and this yellow. These two are already solved, so we can just put those in their solved positions. So if we just have a solved cube here for reference, green should go in the front and yellow should go in the bottom when this is solved. So we'll hold it right here. Now in other scrambles, if I can't find two solved pieces, I could just solve one piece, but in general, just try to solve as much as you can right at the start, just by holding the cube that way. So next we look at what I called the buffer location, which is this one right here. Remember, this one swaps with this one. So this one's red, remember that, and it's on the red, white, blue piece. So we need to know where the red, white, blue piece goes. Now red, white, blue goes here, and you can figure that out from a couple of ways. First way is memorize white top, blue front, red, right, and so on, memorize everything. Another way is to look at the pieces you've already solved and use that to deduce where it must go. The last way is if you're starting out, you can just use a cube for reference. So we figured out that this piece must go here, but then we have to think, okay, which of these stickers should it go onto? We looked at the buffer, it was red, right? Not just red, white, blue, but specifically the red one. So red goes on the right side, so we must be looking at this one. In other words, this goes here. So the first thing that we memorize is where this one needs to go. And this one's letter, you can go through A, B, C, D, and so on, but for this tutorial, just to make things easier, that letter is N. So this is letter N, we memorize this, and then we move on based on what I'm now pointing at. So this one is yellow of yellow, red, blue. So we look for where yellow, red, blue should go. That's at the back bottom right. So that's over here. And what letter should this be specifically? That goes down here because it's yellow. That's W. So we're just going to continue doing this over and over. I'm pointing at this one now because this one went here. And then we look at this piece. This is white, green, red. And so where does white, green, red go? That goes over here. And specifically the green one, because that's the one I was pointing at, that green one goes here onto the front green face. And so that one is the letter J. Next we see where this one goes. This is orange of orange, white, green. So orange, white, green should go here. And the orange one goes on this side. And that is the letter F. Next we see where this one goes. This is orange of orange, yellow, blue. So orange, yellow, blue goes back here. The orange is this one. And that's the letter H. Next we see where this one goes. This one's orange of orange, white, blue which goes to the orange, white, blue spot here, and that's actually the buffer location. So it doesn't matter which sticker on this I actually picked, as long as it ends up back at the buffer piece here, 
the place where the buffer piece should go, then we stop memorizing. And we don't actually memorize E because that's E should be here, but because it's the buffer, we don't memorize it. So once we have a string of letters, how do we turn that into a solution? Each letter represents a spot that we have to swap with. So I'd say at this point that you're gonna blindfold yourself and then just use these letters to solve the rest. So the first letter is N and N is over here. Now every swap is gonna be between the buffer sticker and the target sticker, which is down here. So we can't directly swap N and the buffer, but what we can do is move N over to the target location. So we need a way to move N down to here without touching the buffer piece. Otherwise you're not swapping the right piece anymore. So how you can do this is use moves that don't touch the buffer piece. So that's gonna be R moves, F moves, and D moves. Those ones don't touch the buffer piece. So how we can get N down to here using only R, F, and D moves is with R prime F. And as you can see, N used to be this one, and now N is over here. So this one will swap with N. Now, one thing you can't do is just do R2 to get it over here, because now N is on the side, but we don't want it on the side, we want it on the bottom. Remember the stickers swap, not the pieces swap. So here, after the setup moves, which is R prime F, we're going to do the swapping algorithm followed by undoing the setup moves. So swapping algorithm, and then undo the setup moves. So F, R. And now if you look at this, this is actually solved because that's white, red, blue, white, red, blue. So now we're just gonna focus on the letters and keep going through. So next one is W, which means that's the one back here. And we need to move this to the target with a setup move. That setup move is going to be D prime. That gets it right here. Then swap and undo the setup move. So D and we can just check. Yep, that's solved now. The next letter is J, which is over here. Get that to the target with a setup move, which is R prime. Do the swap. And then R to undo the setup move. So next one is F. And notice how I'm just following what the letters tell me. I don't have to think about what I actually was thinking during the memorization phase. All I have to think about is setup moves and swapping. So F is over here. I need to get it over to here using R, F, and D moves. That can be done with F prime and then D. Swap and then undo the setup moves. And lastly, we have H, which is back here. This one can be put at the target location by doing D prime, it's over here now, and then R, swap, and then undo the setup moves. Once you've run through all the letters, if you've memorized correctly, then the cube should be solved. There's one new concept you have to learn, which is new cycles. This will cover the example I'm talking about now and the next example, which also includes flipped pieces that are in the correct spot already. So sometimes when you reach the buffer, you're not actually done and we'll see why in this scramble. So again, scrambled with white top and green front and I don't see any blocks of pieces that are solved. So I'm just going to, again, solve the white and green piece right here. So the first thing I do is look at the buffer. This is green of green, white, red. So that one is this one right here, which is J. So this one, I have blue of blue, white, orange but blue, white, orange is actually the buffer piece, which means it goes back here. And am I done? Of course not, because there's tons of pieces I haven't solved yet. So when this happens that you reach the buffer piece, it seems like you're stuck, but what you're gonna do now is pick any unsolved piece. Now, how do I know which pieces are unsolved? Well, I've solved this one, and uh, I've solved this one to here because I memorized J. So anything that I already memorized, and anything that I chose to solve right at the beginning is already solved. Everything else is unsolved and I can choose to solve any of them next. So this one is the letter V and I'm gonna use this next. Now, this is called starting a new cycle. When you've reached the buffer and you can't continue, so you choose a new unsolved piece. Now, the thing is when I memorize V here, I'm not actually solving it because the piece didn't need to go to V. So this one is not actually solved and I'm gonna to have to come back to it at the end. So anytime I reach this piece again, not necessarily V, but it could be V or the front one, which is K or this one, which is P. Anytime I reach any of these, then I know that this new cycle is over. So this may make more sense the more I do it, but here I'm just gonna continue. So I memorize V and then where does this one need to go? This is blue of blue, white, red. Blue, white, red goes here. Blue is here, and that's the letter T. This one's green of green, orange, yellow. Green, orange, yellow goes here, and the green one goes here, which is the letter L. Red of red, yellow, green, that's here. The red one is here, and that's the letter P. Now, like I said, we started this cycle with V. Now we're ending it on P. It doesn't have to end on the same letter, it just has to end on the same piece. So once that's actually happened, this cycle is over, and we've solved all the pieces that we just talked about. But now we have to think again, have we actually solved every single piece? And this can be a little tricky, but it can help to keep your fingers on which ones you've actually solved by now. 
And as you can see, well, we're, we don't need to worry about the buffer. As you can see, there's this one here we haven't, haven't gone to yet, and there's this one back here we haven't gone to yet. So we could pick any of these two, and we're actually gonna start another new cycle. So in this case, I haven't touched these two pieces yet, but I'm just gonna pick this one as the one I start with. This is the letter B. It's yellow of yellow, blue, orange, and uh, that one goes over here. Yellow goes down here, that's the letter X. Then this one is white of white, blue, red. That one goes here, white, that's the letter B. So I've come back to the same piece. In this case, it happened to be the same letter, but it didn't have to be. And as long as I come back to the same piece that I started the cycle on, I also memorize it and then the cycle ends. So to recap what happened there, after J, I actually reached the buffer piece there. So that's why I kind of stopped and started a new cycle. Now the next cycle started with a V and it ended when I hit P. And as you can see, I memorized both the beginning and the end of that cycle, which were the same piece. And then the last cycle started with B and ended with B. So again, I memorized both of them, they're the same piece, and that's how I know the cycle ended. Now, I know I finished memorization because I've actually reached every single piece. New cycles are a hard concept to grasp, but make sure that you just rewatch that part if you need to and follow the rules that I've laid out for you. So once you've done the memorization, if you've done it correctly, you, then you don't have to think about like what's a cycle and what's not. You actually just trace through all the letters and solve it as usual. So I won't be showing the actual solution again, but what you do is for each letter, you do the setup moves for that letter. And if you don't know how to do it, you can check the description, but you should be able to figure these out during the solve. Then you do the swapping algorithm. Then you undo the setup moves by reversing them. The hardest part to understand should be how you get these letters. But once you get the letters, actually solving the cube should be pretty straightforward as long as you don't make any mistakes. Now here I'll do one last example that will cover flipped pieces and then that will be everything that you have to know. So the scramble was done white top, green front, and I'm gonna solve as many pieces as I can. We have a block right here, orange goes on the left, yellow goes on the bottom, so I'll solve it like that. All right, the first thing I do is look at this one. This one's orange of orange, white, green. Orange, white, green goes here and orange goes here, that's the letter E. Now, if you're following through, I want you to keep your fingers on all the pieces that we've already solved, except for these, because they're obviously solved already, and then see what happens at the end. So yellow, of yellow, blue, red, that goes to yellow, blue, reds back here. Yellow is the bottom one, that's the letter W. This is green of green, red, yellow. Green, red, yellow goes here. The green one goes here, that's the letter K. White, red, blue, and the white sticker specifically, that one goes back here. White goes up here, and that's the letter B. Now this one, white, blue, orange, that's the buffer, so that's when we stop. And have you been keeping your fingers on all the pieces? Is there any we haven't solved yet? So that's those four pieces, and looks like we haven't touched this one. So this one, then you have to check, is it solved? Um, well, it's not solved because it should be white top and green front. So in this case, we have one piece that needs to get solved, and it looks like we just need to twist it like that. But how we're actually gonna think about this is the same thing as the rule with cycles. So with any new cycle, once you reach the buffer, you have to think about, have I actually reached every piece that I have not solved yet? And the answer is no, there's still this one. So what we're gonna do is memorize this piece. Well, any sticker on this piece as usual. So for example, I could be memorizing the letter M. Now I see where this one should go. And this one's white of white, green, red. So that one, white, green, red, of course goes here. And then white is the top one. So now I memorize this one, which is C. And now, as you can see with the rule of new cycles, we started and ended on the same piece, which means that the cycle is over. So it behaves just like a new cycle, except it's only two letters instead of going somewhere else in between but it works just like a new cycle, so you can think about it that way. All right, and now we're just gonna follow through with the letters. Now, solving a three by three blindfolded is actually the same thing as a two by two, except uh, not only are there corners, which is you see on a two by two as well, you do the same sort of idea for edges and you memorize letters for them as well. So there's around twice as much memorization because you have to do edges as well. But if you think you're up for the challenge, you can check the tutorial here. The description will have more tutorials like how to get faster and three by three, four by four, and so on. So if you're new to this channel, I highly suggest you check those out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.